Hi, my name is Ronit. I'm with Gaurav. We are the hosts of FinTech and Web3 Founders. Thank you to our friends at CFT for producing and hosting us. And as you can see, we got the memo. We are wearing Impel Blue. Uh, Gaurav, of course, has the slim fit version for the fit young man that he is. Um, Troy, thank you so much for joining us today. You are also in Dubai, I believe. Yeah, hello. Uh, thank you very much for having us on today. It's a, it's a pleasure uh, to, to be involved here. Thank you. And yes, uh, we are in, uh, based in uh, Dubai and the UAE. Troy, you're a Texan, right? Can I say that on the Zoom? 100% I qualify. Uh, believe it or not, I'm five generations from Dallas proper. So your family had been in Texas even before it was American, probably. Is that right? A, a long time. I, I wasn't born then, so uh, I'm a little short on the de details. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have like the national flag, the original flag of the Republic of Texas or whatever it was, you know? The... Yeah, well, it's it's been hanging in my family's living room for, for a while, but, uh, oh, but yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I feel so comfortable here in, in Dubai, you know, the same warm weather climate uh, and uh, oil, oil rich environment. So, yeah, it works well. I feel really, really. Big hats and no cattle. Yeah. <laughs> Troy, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're a five generation Texan. What else should the audience know about the three key facts about what makes Troy tick? Who is Troy? Yeah, uh, well, uh, originally I started off with a computer science degree back in the, uh, I'm going to date myself here, so back in the mid-90s, and started building internet sites back as early as 1995, 1996, uh, database-driven internet sites in summer of 97, uh, built our first e-commerce site that took a shopping cart and credit cards uh, back in 1998, so I really fell in love with the internet uh, early on, and uh, and I've stuck with it ever since. Uh, and it was a smooth transition into blockchain uh, as the new you know Web 3.0. And I, I I really enjoy working with it just as much as I I did with the uh, internet early on. And I'm really glad to be in this space. So uh, I've uh, initially started with uh, I guess blockchain about nine years ago when I first got involved. And uh, one of the many projects that I got involved with was called the uh, XTC network, uh, which is a fork of Ethereum. But in essence, it, it has everything that Ethereum has, but it's everything Ethereum wants to be. Uh, and we can talk about that later, but, uh, but I'm involved with it for almost six years now. And uh, um, we launched a company called uh, Impel, which is a startup out of the XTC network to bring payments and instant settlement solutions uh, to, to audiences uh, around the world. And that's what brought us here to Dubai. Our uh, partners, which is uh, Atul and Ritesh, the co-founders of the XTC network, are based here in Dubai in the DISC, and we office with them currently. And that's, that's, uh, that's why I'm here. Troy, we're going to come back to talking about the blockchain aspect of all of this in a few minutes' time. Before we do that, and also about XDC, before we do that, let's talk about Impel a bit more. Um, for folks who know nothing about Impel, how would you summarize Impel? What's the elevator pitch, if you like, for Impel? Sure. Well, we started. You met me, in a, you met me in a bar in DIFC. I know nothing about you. <laughs> We've met Garo at a you know, beach club or something. I don't know. You know no, we know nothing about Impel. <laughs> uh, may I get you a drink? <laughs> what would you like? <laughs> the, uh, so we, we've been in software development uh, about two years now. Uh, Impel became a thing uh, approximately about a year and a half ago as a full-blown entity. We initially started in the U.S. Uh, as a Delaware corporation. Um, some people may know that uh, in the U.S. environment that the SEC is not real friendly towards uh, blockchain projects and whatnot, um, hence uh, um, why we're working out of uh, Dubai these days. Uh, so we have transitioned over to the UAE. Uh, last month, uh, Impel received its uh, ADGM, Abu Dhabi Global Market uh, Free Trade Zone business license uh, last month. Uh, 
Uh, so we're, we're official here in the UAE and, and glad to be here. Uh, so we have two primary solutions and it's all geared towards payments and instant settlement. So if you think about banks, uh, when you when a customer wants to wire money from one account to another account or corporate to corporate or um, cross-border payments uh, everyone's probably heard of swift or most everyone of your audience have probably heard of swift well uh, so we offer something similar to swift um, and then uh, but we take it to the next level where you can add digital assets in the messages payload for instant settlement uh, and then our other solution is we have a bridge uh, to the R3 Corda platform, which is a private distributed ledger technology. And so uh, any user, uh, corporates, uh, the like, can take digital assets from their uh, wallet on the XTC network and move it over to a Corda Corda app on the private distributed ledger technology for uh, making payments on contracts and agreements. So is it kind of messaging? So you have a messaging platform for bank payments and a bridge well, to a blockchain? Did I summarize So, that? IS, so ISO um, years ago, back in 2004, created or presented a new standard for messaging. It's called uh, ISO 20022. So that's the new updated, uh, well, I say new, uh, again, <laughs> They presented it uh, 19 years ago, and it's really kind of now really taking hold globally. Uh, the U.S. has you know, not yet adopted it yet, but other places mm -hmm. around the world certainly has. Um, and so it goes from old, what they call MT message type, to the new MX uh, XML-based message type. And it allows for more granular data, which can keep from having complications when you're sending financial message and data from point A to point B. So the more data, the less trouble that you have with those messages. So why do we need this messaging format? Why is it taking so long to get it done? And how do you guys at Impel fit into all of this? Well, as uh, it's tend to be known in the industry and we're not bashing anyone here, but banks tend to be yeah. slow to adoption on new technology, uh, which yeah. is safe to say, hence the rollout. Yeah. You know, if you think about financial institutions are more about saving money and, and building wealth rather than spending it, then maybe that kind of answers part of the question on why mm -hmm. of, the, uh, of the delay. And there's well, tens means, of thousands of banks around the world have to agree to this, right? Th that's right. So with Impel's solution, um, existing uh, uh, banks and uh, corporates can take advantage of our API. Uh, where you have the traditional providers like Swift or Cepa, uh, they really outprice a, a lot of uh, uh, entities globally that just can't afford those services because the prices are just too high. They just can't afford it. Um, that's where Intel comes in. So we have a price conscientious uh, pricing model that allows anyone from neo banks or startup banks from emerging markets across the world, think about North Africa, Asia, India, here in the UAE, uh, we're, we're a perfect solution for the, the entities that can't afford the traditional providers. I think you get- So go on, Garth. You get industry monopolies, right? Which you try to break effectively using these technology pieces. It's the same in payments. We have the ISO 8583 protocols, which are used by Base24 and everything else and EMV standards, which are done by the card issuers like Visa, MasterCard, and the rest. But a lot of people can't afford the technology or the standards to, to enter into the market to provide payment technology services, which is why in the Web2 world, you still had breakout platforms or technology service providers like Nexo, which has now been adopted by FIS globally as a standard to be a white label product to compete against EMV adoption protocols. And now you also have you know, this pure certification, which is to compete with EMV again in different ways. So that's the web two world. So it's super interesting to hear how blockchain companies are now engaging in providing these formats with trusted, trusted or trustless, as some people call it, um, systems in this space. I think the question that I wanted to ask, and, and Ronit, thank you for allowing me to jump in is, from a curiosity point of view, 
you always have two people sitting on either side of adoption. You have people that are in the space that want to do more, who would want to use you because they want to accelerate. And then you have new players that have never been able to enter in before and work for, with you from scratch to do it. But both of these entities that work with you or want to use your technology are completely different in their maturity. Some are experimenting, some are established businesses. I think that's something that's super interesting for you to put color on for us is about who's adopting it from the mature side of the ecosystem, and who's adopting it from the experimental side uh, so that we can also understand or our listeners can understand moreover about where this is causing an impact because of this wonderful new system and rails you built effectively alongside Swift. Yeah, yeah, thank you that, that, that you framed it uh, exactly right. And that's exactly how we see it here on this side as well. Um, and just um, so everyone understands, uh, Impel solutions are for business to business. Think about uh, banks and corporate. So it's not geared towards the retail market. Um, and that being said, we are a young uh, startup company and we are uh, working on pilot projects uh, globally and creating some corridors, especially around the region, let's say between uh, the US and the UAE or the UAE and North Africa and, and whatnot. Um, and I would like to deep dive a little bit deeper on, on the value that it adds. So our ISO 20022 API can do everything the, the Swift or separate model can do. Think about uh, where you, the, if you're gonna wire funds cross border from bank to bank, you still use Nostro Vostro accounts. You still use the central banking settlement system at the end of the day to settle up. Uh, that's all the same. But with Impel Solution, you have a lower cost, uh, operating cost uh, than you would with a traditional providers. And you, and you have your own peer-to-peer -peer mechanism to communicate. So that's the easiest way for any existing entity to get involved. Uh, if they want to take it to the next level, our next gen solution, that's when we start adding digital assets in the messages payload for instant settlement. For instance, we have a new uh, strategic partner that I say new, uh, we've been partnered up for at least five months now, uh, probably going on six. Uh, there is called Fluent Finance out of the US, and they are also working here in the region in the UAE. Um, and so they have their uh, stable coin is called US Plus, and it's going to be much better than, and there already is much, much better uh, than anything on the market. Uh, some of the existing bigger providers are a lot of people know Tether or Circle, USDT or USDC. Well, they report uh, once a quarter for their approved for reserves. And so they bring in the money uh, once a quarter, they have it audited. After it's audited, the money gets dispersed and who knows where, where it goes to or whatnot. Uh, with Fluent Finance, uh, proof of reserves are reported four times a day, every six hours. And anyone on the internet can see the reporting that's backed up by their, uh, their, in their reserve account. Uh, and that, but also what makes it special is they don't work with exchanges for onboarding and offboarding fiat. They work with a consortium of banking partners. So a customer will um, log into their core banking systems account, uh, you know, their internet uh, site. Uh, they will uh, choose to purchase US plus stablecoin through their customer account. It takes fiat uh, cash from their customer's account, puts it into Fluence reserve account, admits the US plus stablecoin on the XTC network. Uh, that customer can use the US plus stablecoin however they wish. Uh, when they're done with it, they send it back to the bank to redeem it for fiat. It burns those assets on the network and then pulls the funds out of the reserve account, puts it back into the customer's account. So think about that model. And it's a beautiful solution how it ties into Impel's financial messaging. So when a customer wants to wire funds from one bank to another bank, uh, being a fluent finance consortium bank, then we can take funds out of that customer's account, convert it to digital assets, put it in our message payload, get it from point A to point B, and uh, put fiat back in the, in, the, in the receiving customer's account at the other end. You no longer require Nostro Vostro accounts, and you no longer require the 
uh, central bank to settle up at the end of the day. So we're not talking about um, uh, restrictions on time, you know, uh, afternoon cutoff times, holidays, weekends, whatnot. You're talking instant settlement 24-7. Uh, Roy, just to unpack this a bit more, there's an aspect of your sub product which is like Swift messaging. And there's another aspect which is financial settlement, which you guys use blockchain technology to do and banks would do in through the correspondent banking network and then through central bank settlements. Um, and I can just pick the first. I don't have to do the blockchain financial transfer bit if I want to use Impel, correct? So, so that's right. So you're talking about um, if you're taking digital assets, so um, they would be used instead of the traditional traditional means in a, in a way, yeah. But what's the, um, actually maybe another way to think about this is what are the big use cases? And we talked about a little bit about how you can use it in Power with Fluid, but um, think of me as a client. So who, who are your clients? Are your clients, dot, dot, who are your clients? Right, so it, it could be anyone globally. Uh, you know, of course they can't be on the, on the blacklist. But sure. uh, you know, anyone let's say that's not on not on the not on the blacklist uh, can yeah. participate. Um, but yeah, so it, 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 for sure. <laughs> so it could be um, uh, any of the top banks in the world if they so choose. Uh, in, you know, in, in the medium level banks, uh, any startup banks, any neo banks, um, uh, any corporate. So so in a way, corporates uh, could indeed be their own bank in a way. Mm. Uh, it might be a little controversial, but uh, they could have their own digital asset wallet. They could use Impel's ISO uh, API, uh, tie in to their backend accounting systems, push the data when they want to make a payment, push the data from their backend systems into the Impel's API, a robust data format, attach digital assets from their own custody wallet, send the assets through the financial message uh, to the receiving party. And that um, financial message was also tie in to the receiving party's backend system, uh, to their accounting system and uh, into their wallet. So you really have instant settlement peer to peer in a decentralized manner that uh, almost anyone could take advantage of. And can we just talk about the question of like, why now? Like maybe that, Two zero zero two two answers the why now, but well, that is an interesting question. As we as we addressed earlier, that technology and the financial institutions are you know it's a slow adoption, mm -hmm. and if we would have you know started early on any any earlier than we are today, then uh, we probably would have uh, exhausted our ourselves and went to the wayside. But it just seems like the perfect opportunity now that uh, everyone is waking up to uh, blockchain distributed ledger technology. And, and, and it's not about um, pump and dump schemes or um, prices that are uh, you know, speculative investments uh, for uh, Mimi coins or something like that. You know, that's not what we're working on. We're working on uh, technology that really is uh, solid and provides uh, 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 optimization and enhanced performance improvement uh, across the board. And you can do so much more with the technology than you can the existing systems. So mm -hmm. that's really where the value comes in. And that's why uh, it's starting to make its way and throughout the world. Uh, and, but, it, but it's an it takes education. You know, people have to be educated on it, and it takes time. Just like the internet, you know, the internet was slow to adoption in the beginning, and then once it hit the tipping point, it really flipped and went gangbusters. And that's exactly what's happening to blockchain. I want to bring Gaurav in to drill more into the Impel business, fundraising, building teams, getting clients, all that good stuff that he specializes in. <laughs> thanks, thanks so much, Ron. Troy, thank you so much for, for joining us. I know 
you know, we, we, we should have maybe built up the slow walk on, on some of the technology bits, you know, especially when it comes to B2B and it comes to, to payment rails and transfers and cross border, you know, and even R3 itself actually is, 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 a, is a topic you could talk about for a very long time, uh, if, if we're honest with each other about where it came from, how it started, where it's going. But, you know, how long have you been in this space? Can you tell us, you know, how, where did it all start from? A, was it from you were frustrated? Were you in the industry? You saw a gaping hole? What's the, the aha moment where you said, I've got to stop doing what I'm doing and I've got to start doing this full time? I mean, what happened? Well, that all came about a uh, little over two years ago. So as I uh, mentioned earlier, so I've been involved with the XCC network for, let's say, approximately six years now. And, um, and I've been really instrumental in help growing out the ecosystem. So onboarding uh, endpoint providers uh, to hardware wallets, to uh, the crypto exchanges, uh, you know, you, you name it. I was really... Um, all in on helping growing out the ecosystem. Well, as part of that, um, the natural transition was getting into the ISO 20022 uh, mess financial messaging. And because of the robustness and the ability and um, uh, the XTC network has the smart contract capability, it has a, a super fast uh, block time, like two seconds. Uh, has really high scalability, 2,000 plus transactions per second. So compared to so, some of the other blockchains, uh, the gas fees are almost non-existent. It's like 0 0.00001 cent per transaction uh, on average. So the network is really capable for handing this kind of uh, global solution. And in fact, the, uh, the co-founders come from a banking trade finance background. So it was their vision all along to uh, have this kind of trade finance and payments activity on the network. Well, they had come to me about uh, Atul and Ritesh are the co-founders and they came to me just about two years ago or whatnot and asked if I would like to, um, to lead out bringing these solutions to market. And really, I don't even think I blinked or <laughs> thought twice, I, I said, yes, I, I'm committed to doing this. And really, so I say that I work for the XCC community because the, uh, the co-founders operate and the, the network based on uh, community first principles. So they don't per se run it from a top down. They like to find people that are in the community that are invested in XCC, that, that have skill sets and want to participate and it's just organically grown up through the, uh, the community on the people that are involved in, uh, um, in the uh, XCD Network's uh, ecosystem. So I was one of those members and they had, uh, they had asked if I wanted to, to bring these uh, solutions to market and, and, and I did. And initially we we're going to uh, provide an open source format uh, for these and just throw the code out there and let people you know, use it uh, as they wish. But we decided to um, form a company around it and uh, create some revenue, uh, you know, based on based on this, and re and really give it a good go to to leverage to have the most impact, uh, you know, if, if you will. Uh, and it, it's, if you think about this, what really drives me is, for a long time, uh, people say that money makes the world go around, and we are changing the way that how money moves around the world. So in essence, we're really changing the world. That's, that's, thanks for sharing that. So it gives us a great origin story to understand how you're, you're approaching this. The next piece of you know, the journey that you organically take moving one foot forward in front of the other is you have this moment where you see an opportunity, there's a network there, there's like-minded people that you've just talked about, trying to solve the problem of moving money around for people that need enablement on the B2B side, right? And to service the sector. There are two parts to the next story of your journey. One is, what do we build from scratch? And the second part is, because it's a new technology space, because it's a new way of adoption or thinking, 
the, you know, trust or trustless, however you want to use that framework of the ecosystem you're building, adoption needs to follow. So talk us through what you built first and then talk us through how you got the first people to adopt it. Did you know that journey as well? Was it very tough or was it super easy because when people saw the light, they were like, we need this immediately or did people say, oh my God, you know, but we don't know you and you've been around for such a short time. How can I move my entire infrastructure to you? Just take us through those two pieces of the conversation. That'd be very, very, very uh, enlightening. Mm -hmm. Sure. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, our software development has been going on for approximately two years now. We do have a live working product. Uh, if you go to our internet site at impel.global, there is a self-paced ISO 20022 demo that anyone in the world could uh, participate in. So they would, uh, all they have to do is, you know, give their name and their email address. They get a link that's sent to their private email and that link, that link is only good for them. They can't pass it to their peers. Uh, uh, they would have to sign up individually. So anyone in the world could create their own ISO 20022 financial message uh, from a pretend bank A, pretend customers, and send it to a pretend bank B and pretend customers. They could select the dollar amount, either choose to attach digital assets for instance, settlement or don't. Uh, you can have a choice of the different assets that you want to choose. Uh, send the message over our uh, the XCC Network's live mainnet. You can see the transaction history and not only the messages that you sent, but as well as all the messages that anyone in the world has sent from the very beginning. You can do a deep dive into the XML code and uh, and get to the bottom of the uh, uh, the financial messages. So you can really see, a, anyone in the world can see a live version. So we do have that going. As far as adoption goes, it, it is slow, uh, as we've been talking about. It's standard to the industry. People are just kind of waking up. And I will say that there's a big difference this year compared to last year as far as uh, uh, ad adopters, people wanting to participate and whatnot. But organizations are still a little bit slow in testing it out, and they're not even though I think it's a great idea, they're a little bit slow to, to implement it uh, and whatnot. So we do have our work cut, cut out for us, uh, but we are getting a lot of attention as far as people realize the value and that their entities uh, that they're working with are slowly gravitating towards uh, blockchain. Something that has hurt us is you know, some of the, the negative um, uh, news uh, in the industry, you know, some of the other organizations that really weren't conducting business in a good, healthy manner that, that kind of sabotaged the industry in a way, uh, you know, that, that has not helped us. Uh, it just kind of prolongs the, the implementation through the entities uh, that we're working with because they, 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 they might get a little overly cautious uh, and then it kind of goes away after a while and they pick up steam again. Before I hand back to Ron, a couple of business questions just in about the team. There's, you know, more and more people coming to this space. Do you have a split between people that, on your team that are bringing in Web 2 uh, experience and knowledge and Web 3 so that they talk to each other? Because essentially what you're trying to do is, is bring everyone from Web 2 and Web 3 to benefit from what you're building in terms of Rails. So can you tell us about your team? How big is it? How have you built it? What does it look like from a web two, web three uh, mix and composure? Mm -hmm. That's always interesting mm -hmm. in businesses that are kind of building infrastructure products that marry both or bridge both worlds. Sure, right. So uh, initially we started out with uh, using a lot of uh, third parties to help us with software development, our, our marketing, uh, our PR and, and whatnot. And now we're transitioning to, to bring that more in-house. Um, we just brought a, a fantastic uh, global business development manager on board, uh, Sarah McHale. Uh, she joined us uh, almost two months ago. Um, she is from the region. She comes from a trade finance background, not involving digital assets and not involving blockchain. Uh, she's currently uh, actually getting her master's in, in blockchain uh, technology. Oh, so. Wow. And so, uh, yeah, we're, we're really thrilled to have her on board. She'll be attending the conference with us uh, next week at the ICC. So if anyone's in the region wants to come by and say hi, they can, they can meet her. But uh, 
but yeah, that's exactly right. So we're we're working with individuals that uh, come from the from the old old school old way of thinking and that that are interested in kind of like the community members in the XCC network. You know, they all have walks of life that they're they're in the old world, but they they uh, they're drawn to the new world of, of blockchain technology, um, and and that's really how it goes. And the the last question is on you you know the products that you're building now. You built an API. You're building a network. From a product design and servicing perspective, are you mirroring design for products and services that exist today that would just fit within your infrastructure, or are you building a completely new path for products and services that people from the XTC network or elsewhere from adopting would want? Well, regarding the ISO two zero zero two two API. So we are we try to make it as easy uh, as possible for existing entities that are using traditional providers just as a plug and play model. Uh, else they would they would just kind of transition into a peer to peer decentralized model. Um, still using Nostro Vostro accounts, still using the central bank to settle up at the end of the day. So that would be a blend uh, of the two, as we had we had talked about earlier. Um, the next generation model is adding the digital assets and the messages payload um, still working with you know banks and financial institutions but they would just be using the newer technology uh, without the traditional providers uh, as far as our r3 quarter bridge goes uh, that is something new to the industry that is that we're working to get some traction on uh, so any corporates or banks that have quarter court apps on their own if they wanted to do private settlement uh, for contracts and agreements uh, using digital assets, uh, they could use our, our bridge to do that. And that's still something new uh, that people are being introduced to and it is also slow to adoption. Thanks so much, Troy. Uh, really, really, really interesting to see how you're approaching that build and team and product exercise when you go up to market wishing you all the best and love to hand back to ronan yeah maybe thank a, you very much well, nice to see you maybe a couple of questions before you wrap up the the podcast um you mentioned your involvement in xdc tell us about how did you get into blockchain technology and related to that why xdc uh is it just you met retention at all somewhere or someone in the community or what drew you to that network Without, if you can, giving us too much of a sales pitch for XDC, but you know, like what drew you the fundamentals of XDC? So, I got involved in blockchain about nine nine years ago when I when I um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna limit what what I what I say <laughs> what what I say here, but uh, but I knew about blockchain before, mm -hmm. and uh, it turns out I, I was in uh, graduate school at the University of Texas at Dallas, and uh, mm -hmm. I saw so I was a a poor college student at the time. And um, mm -hmm. so I knew about blockchain, but I didn't really see the value, just as I'm sure like some a lot of people today, they're just getting introduced to it. That's mm -hmm. when uh, it was like the online uh, game of Sims where you could use the digital asset, you know, Bitcoin, you know, back then, but like, well, how do I get the money out of the game? You know, how do I use it in, in real life or whatnot? Um, so I was aware of it, but I didn't really, uh, it, it, the light didn't go off until mm. a couple of years later, but I, which is I'll always have to frown upon uh, missing uh -huh. out on the um, exponential exponential growth and and that. But um, so, so I was really you uh, was like you just wanted to get money out of the game. <laughs> You're thinking of transferring value and micropayments and so on, and how do I do this? That's yeah, kind yeah, of the uh, blockchain. Well, I, I'll tell you, I do come from an entrepreneurial uh, background and, and I have a strong entrepreneurial spirit. I was mm -hmm. uh, literally um, buying and selling cattle with my grandfather at eight, year, eight years old and going door to door selling stationery and greeting cards at 10 years old. So uh, entrepreneurship's really been in my blood since the very beginning. Um, and I'm thankful for that. But back to the ecstasy network. So I was really on, on the hunt to to find the projects that uh, were gonna be sustainable, that were gonna be, uh, have a lot of growth. And out of all the ones that I uh, emerged myself in and got involved with, 
the XCC network really hit home with me personally. One, because it's community driven um, and uh, it's a great solid project. So uh, we've had the main net has been up for almost come June 1st. It'll be uh, live. Main net will be live for four years straight with zero downtime. So it's really not fair. You, you compare some of the other uh, blockchain protocols that's in the, you know, at the top of the list and they're going down all the time. Um, the XTC network has been in coin market caps top 100 for two years now. It, it, uh, and it just seems like the most undervalued project on, on the, uh, in the space, uh, but not for long, maybe by the end of the year, we, we will be in the, in the top. But, no sales uh, pitches. Tell us what's fundamentally <laughs> good about it. <laughs> so, one okay, one, one I'll, 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 nah, yeah, I, I'm so passionate good. about this. It's really know, hard for me not to talk about it. <laughs> but so, really, the reason I did get involved with it, uh, Ron, it is is because it's a solid protocol. Uh, yeah. The co-founders really work hard to mm -hmm. um, uh, engage with the community. Uh, and I really found a place where I could contribute and make a difference. And so that was really important to me. And so there's oh. so much opportunity uh, with, with this space. And that's really why I fell in love with it. And I, it's, and I, and I'm, and I live it every day. Uh, and I'm glad to, glad to be here and glad to be in this space. I'm very fortunate Indeed. for that. Indeed. Your company is called Impel. That's correct. Why? <laughs> well, how, how about we uh, we encourage the audience to do a little bit of homework and look up the <laughs> definition of Intel. <laughs> the uh, but in a sense, it, it, it's it, you know it's a, it's ca causing one thing you know to move from one place to another. You want to look it up for us and uh... I've got a dictionary out here. Yeah, Impel verb to urge or to drive forward. You know, coming uh, Ron, it comes from a, a business uh, background. Uh, and I really have an appreciation for strategy. So mm -hmm. if you, and I'm sure many people in your audience would realize the fact that a lot of entities start with uh, their name is two or three words uh, together. Mm -hmm. And then over time, they short it, they drop a word here and there. It used to be the, I don't know if I guess we'd say the Facebook, but now it's called you know, Facebook. So anyway, yeah. so I, I kind of knew that in advance. So I was really trying to mitigate any uh, changes in the future and come up with a, a really short name that kind of said said what we do that is easy to spell and easy to pronounce, and it had meaning behind it. Hmm. Well, we were impelled to bring you on the show so that we could learn more about ISO two zero zero two two. If I got that right. Um, I think the audience, if they've stayed with us the whole 50 minutes, will have learned a lot about payments, uh, B2B payments. Um, and if we want to do more work and finding out about you, what's the best way? Is there a website? Is there like a LinkedIn page, a Twitter page? How, how's, how should the audience sort of learn more about you and Impel? Thank you, Ronan. Uh, we would be pleased to uh, engage with your community. And by all means, if you're interested, reach out to us. We'd love to sit down with you. And um, wh whether you're just a, um, an entity that wants to implement our services or you're new to blockchain, whatever it may be, we're, we're here to help uh, in this space. So our internet site is impel.global. We're on Twitter, we're on LinkedIn, uh, and we're on Telegram. Thank you so much for joining us today, Troy. Thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure. Thanks a lot, Troy. <laughs>